when you talked to Tom, you felt like you were the most special person in his life. But as we all know, Tom was special in thousands of people's lives. This morning, celebrating the life of a man hit and killed on John Nolan. How he'll be remembered this weekend. We check in with Madison's tiny home project one year in and whether residents there think it's succeeding. And all good things do come to end. We are expecting rain and cooler temperatures, which we kind of do need. I'll break down when we expect that rain and how much we'll get. All right, good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to News 3 Now this morning. Thanks for waking up with us. I'm Leah Lynchide. And I'm Chris Stanford. Chris Reese is off this week. He's in Hawaii. Yeah, Can I you know. believe He's that? Hawaii. He's yeah. missing beautiful weather here, though. Not the best week to head to Hawaii. He should have waited for, but he likes the snow. He I likes guess. cold and snow. So he actually, does, yeah. uh, he went to a place that doesn't have cold snow either. But, yeah, uh, you're right. So, but <laughs> overall, yeah, we've had a good stretch of weather and uh, we're still seeing it. But we are starting to see some changes, especially out west. We got uh, dew points are starting to increase. It's a sign of moisture is starting to come back up along with our temperatures. So we are going to see some changes come this week. You see overall current dew points, 50 dew points all the way up north. So that is a good sign that some moisture is beginning to pull, which we do need the rainfall. Overall, you see from yesterday, 35, we're up to 40. So a little bit of increase. Yesterday, we got up to 70 degrees too. Once again, we're going to see that again today in 70. Mid-70s in some locations in the warmer spot. Actually, we're 77 yesterday in Lone Rock, so almost getting towards 80 here. Uh, we'll get up to about 64 by noon with sunny shines. Uh, we'll have south winds 5 to 10, so overall a great day. If you look at the satellite image right now, we got basically no clouds to speak of, a few cirrus out there. Temperatures overall real warm, even to the west in the 50s this time of year as that wind start picking up out to the west. There's that system out to the west. It's kind of disorganized, but it's a lot of that snow mountain snow and valley rain and we will see that come this way and i'll break down when to expect that and how this weekend looks a bit later in the broadcast all right greg barnhart thank you very much it is six o'clock now we have breaking news into the newsroom of a hit and run involving a bicyclist let's get right to our shane hogan with what we know shane yeah chris an investigation continues this morning after a bicyclist was struck in the town of lodi officers responded to county highway j near cultus road yesterday around 3 p.m after the bicyclist was hit and the suspected driver fled the scene the caller witnessed the crash and was able to provide a description of the car and sometime later with assistance from the Lodi Police Department, authorities arrested 43-year-old Marie Pinkston of rural Lodi. She has been charged with hit and run causing great bodily harm and injury by intoxicated use of a motor vehicle. Pinkston is currently being held in the Columbia County Jail awaiting an initial appearance. The bicyclist that was struck sustained serious injuries and was transported to a local hospital. All right, Shane Hogan with that breaking news. Thank you very much. A celebration of life service will be held in Watertown this Saturday for the 71-year-old bicyclist hit here in Madison just last week. For years, Thomas Hedinger was a conductor and performer in bands across the state, including here in Madison. Henninger was biking to the 2022 State Music Conference when he was struck by a vehicle on John Nolan Drive. It was devastating. You don't just replace somebody like that. He really believed in equity and access to music education and that sense of belonging in the music classroom, in a music ensemble, and in the music community. Cel Celebration of Life service will be held in Watertown this Saturday at 3 o'clock. Henninger's family sent to us a statement which reads in part, hearing stories of the influence that our Tom had on the lives of others fills us with hope as we begin the long process of coming together and healing from the scars of this immeasurable loss. The man accused of breaking into an apartment near the UW campus and assaulting a sleeping woman inside, back in court today. 19-year-old Safwan Takar has a status conference scheduled for 11.15 a.m. He's accused of getting into the apartment at Park Street and Fairbrook Court through an unlocked window, then getting into bed with the tenant and sexually assaulting her. He's facing charges of sexual assault of an unconscious victim, burglary, and bail jumping. In Green Bay, a woman accused of murdering and dismembering a man earlier this year will receive an additional competency exam. Taylor Shaw Business was originally ruled competent to stand trial in June, but last month one of her attorneys raised concerns about her ability to understand the case after her brother died in July. Doctors have until the 11th now, next Friday, to turn in a mental evaluation. Shaw Business will have another competency hearing on November 18th. The Fall River teenager accused of stabbing and running over a girl in Beaver Dam last month will now enter a treatment program. 
17-year-old Dylan Lenz is charged with attempted first-degree intentional homicide. His lawyer says Lenz will remain in the program per the advice of his providers. Online court records show a preliminary hearing in the case is scheduled for November 17th. Fire crews say that a cardboard box started a fire on the east side. Uh, Crews were sent to the 700 block of Fair Oaks Avenue just after 540 in the evening on Friday after smoke was seen coming from the garage. Firefighters worked their way inside and they put those flames out. The homeowner said that they used the grill to make dinner and then later put a box on top of the grill. No injuries were reported. Almost a year after its opening, the city-sanctioned homeless campground on Madison's Far East Side doing exactly what it was provided to do. It offers small, warm shelters for dozens of people. But there's more to meets the eye to some of the people who temporarily call it home. Our Braden Ross spoke to one of those residents about their concerns. From the outside of Dairy Drive, a homeless shelter the city of Madison built appears to serve its purpose. But some of the people inside see something else. There's just been a lot of... Broken promises. Christian moved into a Dairy Drive tiny home in May, about five months after it first opened. They were hopeful the resources the city promised could help them get back on their feet, but they say that hasn't been the case. It's very difficult to, to make progress when you never see your social workers. It seems like every time you need access to one of them, they're behind closed doors. Some basic needs are met, warmth and shelter. But Christian says there are plenty of other needs not being met, like a lack of a dedicated internet connection and some security issues. I don't think that people really have what they need. I think that we're just kind of stocking the bathrooms with needles and hoping for the best. But I think that they need to be more proactive. Since opening nearly a year ago, the campground has housed more than 50 people, helping nearly a third of them find permanent housing. So Brenda Conkle sees a different picture when she looks at the site. Given the amount of barriers that people have to getting into housing is... is it's fairly successful. Conkle is executive director at Mach 1, the third party operator. She says she recognizes some of the issues Christian raises, but they're hard to solve with the resources at hand. You know, it's very different than anything that's ever been done in the city before. So, you know, it's not all, you know, rainbows and unicorns all the time. Christian says they believe the staff at Dairy Drive has good intentions, but that doesn't change the issues they see. The people who work at Dairy Drive want the best for the residents there. Um, but they're fighting a losing battle. If we were doing what we could be doing with it, I'd be proud of it. I think that there's definitely potential there. For News 3 Now, I'm Braden Ross. Last month, the Madison Common Council voted to approve funding that would keep the encampment open through 2023. But beyond that, the community development director tells us that he's not sure if it will stay operational. All right, happening today, the Wisconsin Union wants to help make sure your family has a full Thanksgiving meal this holiday season. You can order the meal as a personal or a family size, which includes entrees, sides, and desserts. The personal meal will cost you 16 bucks. The family meal, 150. You have until November 16th, couple weeks here, to order. Pickup is the day before Thanksgiving. You can take a look at the options available for order over on channel3000.com. The Packers just announced their next Hall of Fame class. Coming up, the two players who earned the spots. hy V Red Hot deals are super hot this Monday through Thursday. Doritos, only $1.88. Basket and bushel raspberries, only 99 cents. And Sara Lee whole grain white bread, only 99 cents. Scan the code, get deals, only at hy V. He pushed tax loopholes, benefiting himself. Send him back, and he'll make things worse. Ron Johnson would let Wisconsin ban abortion, even in cases of rape, and said if you don't like it, you can move. He voted to raise the retirement age and wants to end guaranteed spending on the Social Security you earned. Social Security is a legal Ponzi scheme, but that's exactly what it is. Ron Johnson still making it harder on us. SMP is responsible for the content of this ad. I'm Rebecca, and you might know me from reality TV. And this was my stubborn body fat that I just couldn't get rid of. But then I went to Sonobello, and they permanently removed my body fat in just one visit. It is... So intensely gratifying for one visit to make this big of a change. It's amazing. Sono Bellows board certified surgeons use micro laser technology to safely target and remove your diet resistant fat cells permanently on your stomach, hips and thighs, back, 
and so much more. It feels incredible to look down and it's flat. Thank you again, Sonobello. I'm so happy. Schedule your free, no obligation consultation and find out how you can get $250 off instantly. Call 1-800-595-1532 or go to sonobello.com. Reclaim your garage with Edsel Shelving at Menards. These heavy-duty steel shelving units are designed to hold more and assemble easily in minutes. Perfect for your garage, basement, or workshop. All 11% off at Menards. Light up your garage, storage space, or workspace with a three-panel LED bulb from GT Light. This powerful 8,000 lumen bulb lasts 50 times longer and is 10 times brighter than a traditional incandescent bulb. Pick yours up today and save 11% at Menards. Save big money at Menards. As governor, I'll always try to do the right thing. I've worked with both parties to find middle ground to improve and invest in our public schools, cut income taxes, and put our state on solid financial footing. But here's what I won't do. I won't cut public school funding. I won't be Donald Trump's puppet. And I'll never allow radical politicians to make decisions about abortion. That should be left to women and their doctors. I'm Tony Evers, and I'm asking for your vote. High V Red Hot Deals are super hot this Monday through Thursday. Fresh chicken breasts, only $1.99 a pound. Red Baron Pizza, only $1.99. And It's Your Churn or Till the Cows Come Home Ice Cream, only $2.48. Scan the code, get deals, only at High V. You're watching News 3 Now this morning. In the 608 this morning, we have a fun way to help support the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund. You know, normally flannel is reserved for Fridays here on the program, but Josh Ryder breaking out the flannel a couple of days early for a good cause this morning. Josh, tell us all about it. Good morning, guys. Any excuse for me to pull out another flannel, right? This time of the year, keep me warm on a Wednesday morning or any morning here in November. But hey, we've got a great reason for you to pull out your flannel this coming Saturday and also give back here in the 608. We are talking about helping the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund. I want to bring in Eric Challenge right now to talk more about Flannel Fest. And I mean, Eric, this has been around for many years and the yeah. impact that this is having is pretty cool and then you get to have fun right along with it. Exactly. We've over the last nine years, raised $80,000 to help our Wisconsin neighbors in need, keep them safe in their homes in the cold winter months or the warm summer months. And it's just been incredible to do that with music, with flannel, with friendly people. It's amazing. So Flannel Fest happening this Saturday, and exactly how does that work in helping out the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund? Sure. So the, the, the great thing is that all the money that's raised for Keep Wisconsin Warm, like over 90 cents of every dollar goes right to these, these people that need it. So elderly, veterans, young families, just all these people that might just need a little helping hand, a little hand up in the, the extreme months of our Wisconsin weather, and, and they're getting direct payments to help pay for these bills. It's just amazing. I mean, you talk $80,000, that is a significant chunk of change, and that you couldn't have been able to do without the help of the community. Exactly. Just everybody coming together. We have the bands, we have the, the flannel faithful that come out to these shows. It's been amazing support over the last nine years, and, and we're very excited to be doing it again. You know, how important is it for you to be able to continue getting that support for the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund? Because obviously your work is not done. This is something that is always needed. Right, yeah, year round. I mean, they, they certainly could use help year round with this organization. And we've, we've done some other events like Vet Aid and some other things that uh, News 3 Now has also helped with. Um, and this is just our kind of our fall version of, of what we can do to help out. All right, so pull out your flannel. Let's hit us with the details. Let's throw the information up on the screen right now. What do people need to know if they're interested in coming out on Saturday? Uh, the best thing to do is go to flannelfest.com. Uh, tickets are available right now. Um, go grab your tickets. Come on out. We're going to have doors opening at 5 o'clock, and the bands kick off at 6 o'clock. Go all the way till probably 11.30, something like that. Five different bands, Natural Satellite, Bascom Hill, Beth Kelly Band, Mascot Theory, and the four on the floor. So lots of cool music, lots of cool people. Great keeping way to- Keeping warm. Yes, keeping warm, bringing people together, right? We're exactly. all about community here in the Madison area exactly. and making a difference is huge. Exactly.
It's a great cause. Thank you so much, Eric. Thank Appreciate you. it. We'll have all this up on channel3000.com. Awesome. As Eric mentioned, News 3 Now is a proud sponsor of this event. So you can come out and make a big difference here. And let's keep people warm this winter, guys. We know that the cold is eventually going to come. It's been nice this week, but we know that the bottom's going to fall out because we live here in Wisconsin, right? You never know what's going to happen. But let's uh, do our part and help some folks out here in the 608. Let's do it. Sounds like a plan. Josh Breider this morning live. Thanks, Josh. Remember to let Josh know what inspires you in the 608. You can reach out to him on social media or shoot him an email for the chance to be featured. The Urban League of Madison is receiving millions of dollars in grant money from somebody you might know. The money comes from Mackenzie Scott, who made billions with Amazon. Scott donating $2.9 million to the league. They plan to use some of that money to help complete the Black Business Hub. The rest of those dollars will be used to speed up some of the other existing programs for the Urban League. It's one of 25 leagues that received similar donations from Ms. Scott, who pledged nearly $100 million to organizations nationwide. All right, let's check in with Greg Barnhart now with your first warn certified most accurate forecast. Uh, some new drought information in this morning. What do we have? Yeah, we've expanded the drought over the area just because we haven't had the rainfall. October ended up being almost two inches below what we should be in Madison. So abnormally dry stretch further east, moderate over to the west. If you remember, September actually did fairly well for southeast Wisconsin, uh, over four inches in Milwaukee, three inches above for Madison. But everything to the west kind of got spared on that too. So that's why we've seen some drought. But we are going to see some beneficial rains coming. Pattern right now, southwest winds aloft. We've got basically that system out west that's beginning to push uh, further east that's producing the mountain snow and valley rain. That's a system that's going to begin to push eastward and provide us a front by Friday, showers, thunderstorms, and then continuing through Saturday too as the system lifts north along this stalled front by that time. Then we'll start seeing clearing skies. But one thing you notice that we do not see the real dark colors of cold air to the north. It really never gets down to this area, even behind the system into early next week. So though we'll have rain through the weekend, it won't be that cold still Colder than 60, uh, 70 that we had, but more 60s. The cold air really starts to push further east as we get past election day to the end of next week when we'll start getting back towards average. So overall today, winds will start picking up. Light cloud, a few clouds out there. Overall, still a fantastic day for overall. Tomorrow and tonight will be still a nice warm overnight for really November. Tomorrow, more clouds will start picking up. The winds will also increase as that system gets closer. A few showers will start developing towards Thursday night, more after midnight, and then spread eastward towards Friday morning. It looks like by Friday afternoon is when we see this boundary kind of stall over the area. We're going to see rounds of showers and maybe a thunderstorm throughout the whole day and through Friday night and continuing to Saturday morning. That's when the best shot for rainfall is going to occur. But in the meantime, we should see about uh, lows to mid-70s once again in the afternoon. Really a fantastic day. Once again, no issues to speak of through the evening hours. Temperatures still then slowly drop. But overall tonight, much warmer than we had this morning. We'll probably be more in the low 50s for the first time of November, which is really unusual. And then tomorrow, more cloud cover comes in a factor, but overall temperatures will be the same. As you see, rainfall, this is what we're kind of looking for really is Friday evening, Friday night, when it really gets a nice light to moderate rainfall. The system begins to push north by Saturday afternoon. Could even see some mixed uh, further north of La Crosse as it mixes in, especially Saturday morning, and then that system basically lifts out. So that's kind of the time frame. And then Sunday actually doesn't look too bad. We should have cloud cover, but overall around 60. Once again, still about above average to what we should see. One thing you'll notice tomorrow, winds too. Overall through Thursday into Friday, gusty winds up to 30. That'll be the thing to watch out, along with the rain and thunderstorms too. So as we look at the 10 day, not that bad really. We don't get to average to about the end of next week yet. So although we are gonna cool down, not really going back to where we should be. So it's a gradual change. Election day right now too, is there's still a chance of rain, but overall still upper 50s is not bad for second week of November. Pretty nice if you like to live in the moment. Exactly. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> hey, the Packers have officially announced their 2023 Hall of Fame inductees. Both uh, were on that Super Bowl 45 winning team. Getting inducted next August. Jordy Nelson and Josh Sitton. Nelson, of course, spent nine years in green and gold. He ranks third for touchdown receptions, fourth for both receptions and 100-yard receiving games, and sixth for receiving yards. As for Sitton, he was an anchor for the Packers O-line, starting 112 of 121 games and all postseason games. Sitton was 
uh, four-time Pro Bowler, three of uh, which he was a Packer for. Both he and Nelson retired as Packers in 2019. Rogers making his weekly appearance on the Pat McAfee show, the MVP diving in deep on his team's loss to the Bills. Something he circled back to from his post-game presser was the state of the team heading to Buffalo. He says the energy, the confidence, the week of practice, the pregame locker room vibes, they all felt like the Packers again. He says, while it felt great, didn't add up to a win. Still, though, it's encouraging to see. So what's his message now? We've never really been a moral victory team in Green Bay. We're about wins. And when you're not having wins and you're slumping, um, I think the most important thing is just to see the uh, how we deal with adversity and if we're going to stick together. And yeah, everything is kind of in front of us. There's a lot of teams in that 4-4, four 3-5 and four, three and five range. We still have nine games left. There's a lot to play for. And Game 3 of the World Series last night. <laughs> Great news to wake up to this morning if you're a Phillies fan. Phillies Astros, Phillies open it up with this. Uh, huge Bryce Harper home run there in the first. Uh, Philly would go on to just destroy the Astros. Five home runs on the night. Phillies going to win seven and nothing. A couple of times last night. The fans there in Philly registered on the Richter scale, believe it or not. Game uh, four tonight in Philadelphia. Uh, Philly is up 2-1 to one now in the series. First pitch at 7.03 on Fox. 6.20, some news that's going to impact your wallet this morning. The Federal Reserve about to boost its benchmark interest rate yet again today. The expected 0.75 percentage point bump would be its fourth consecutive hike of that size. Economists are hopeful this would be the final such move. They'll be watching closely to see if the Fed signals a possible shift to slow those rate increases. That could start as early as next month. New Twitter owner Elon Musk has proposed charging eight bucks a month for its blue service, that uh, check mark that appears uh, to verify someone for celebrities and public figures. Musk says the move is partly to pay the bill and partly to defeat those so-called bots and trolls. He also announced overnight that Twitter will not allow anyone who was deplatformed for violating the rules back on until there is a, quote, clear process. Spotify is publicly lashing out at Apple over a dispute about its 30% app store fee on in-app digital services transactions. Spotify refuses to pay the 30% fee and therefore can't sell audiobooks a business is trying to break into inside its iOS app. The music streamer built three workarounds it thought were consistent with Apple's policies. All three rejected. A lawyer for Spotify said the issue is, quote, reflective of Apple's anti-competitive practices. Apple also sells audiobooks, by the way. It wouldn't directly address Spotify's campaign, saying only that Spotify's workaround broke its rules. It's 621 now, coming up in our next half hour, a vote to combine fire departments, where it's happening and how it's going to impact firefighters. We'll be right back. This portion of News 3 Now is sponsored by Shopco Optical. Cobus and Buses, now hiring. My name is Mike Williams. I've been driving school bus off and on for 21 years. Here at our terminal, we're kind of like a family too. Somebody has an issue with a bus, other people kick in and help and get the job done. Aren't you tired of the division, the anger? I know I sure am. Our country faces enormous challenges. I promise I'll do everything I can to help make things better, and I'll always tell you the truth. What continues to give me hope are the kind and decent people I meet all over Wisconsin, people who love America and are willing to work hard to unify and heal it. Please join us. I'm Ron Johnson, and I approve this message, and I'm asking for your vote. Hi, I'm Tim O'Brien, owner of The Healthy Place. I'm excited to tell you about our new Wild Theory CBD products that will get you high fives from everyone you know. Wild Theory's new groundbreaking formula has higher levels of the good stuff and it packs surprising results. Is it legal in Wisconsin? Of course! Is it potent? You bet. Will you love it? I'm sure of it. Stop by one of our Madison locations or visit findyourhealthyplace.com, type in high five and our website will hook you up. There will always be bumps in the road, but we got guts, America. We got freedom. We got power. We got the future. So let's drive on and make the future we want to see together. Because your new Ford vehicle is just the start of a journey. So stop by your Ford dealer today. 
and claim one of the thousands of new Ford trucks and SUVs on their way. We've been building this country for 119 years, but we're just getting started. IRS agent is waiting for your call back. When you've been scammed, when a business won't listen, when you get obstacles instead of solutions, don't give up. Call for action. I'm News 3 Now's Leah Lynchide. Our Call for Action team is here for you, exposing scams, mediating consumer disputes, and getting results. Contact us by phone or on channel3000.com. Call for Action, only on News 3 Now. We're taking action for you. News 3 Now Sports brings you the Badger Blueprint. Join us every week for an exclusive look at Wisconsin football. From the practice field to the locker room, the game day previews and highlights. Badger Blueprint, Wednesdays only on News 3 Now at 10. With the cost of groceries rising, UW Athletics and the Goodman Community Center need your help more than ever to provide Thanksgiving meals to 4,000 local families. Please consider a food or monetary gift so no one goes without a holiday dinner. Cobison Buses, now hiring. Working with Cobison, it's definitely been great because of the flexibility. If you do need time off, they work around you. They, they definitely try to make it a company that's based for you. Visit cobison.com to apply. Welcome back. We always ask you to share your morning with us. Linda sending in a stunner of an actual sunrise. Kind of a rarity for us here. Yeah, we'll take it. It's a beautiful golden landscape here. Uh, loving this. What a photo. Thank you so much for snapping it and sharing it with us, Linda. If you want to share your morning or just got a cool picture to share, use the hashtag mynews 3 morning and we'll post, uh, after you post it, we'll, we'll share it here on the program. Those right? sunrises are finally going to start coming in a little bit earlier, starting next week, am I right? Yeah, Time's, uh, time change. Oh yeah, time <laughs> change this saving weekend. Time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. You go back. But first, we get to enjoy a couple more days of degrees. summer. Yes, it actually is going to be nice for a couple more days, uh, really. And let's go for the bus. I mean, this is more better for September than November, so can't really complain about that. And like I said, there's all the things to know about all the things that are going to be coming up. The rain does come back in the forecast, but the temperatures are not going to cool off too much through the weekend. All, all right. right. Thanks, Greg. Keep it here, folks. We're back right after this. News 3 Now First Worn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Here at Precision, we are veteran owned and we take pride in servicing not only our community but serving our country as well. No job is too big and no job is too small. Here at Precision, we'll fix them all. Precision Door Service, a name you can trust. If you overdraw your account, Wells Fargo gives you an extra day grace period to avoid the overdraft fee. What if everything came with a grace period? Like accidentally parking where you shouldn't. Hey, what about this one? Nah, that one gets an extra day. Somebody got lucky. Like having an extra day grace period? When it comes to overdrafts, you can with Wells Fargo. I see your hard work, everything you do to try to make it, but people continue to be left behind. I'm running for Senate to put more money in your pocket. Ron Johnson's had 12 years to make things better, but costs are still rising, and all he's managed to do is write a tax cut for himself. I believe better is possible. I believe hard work can pay off, and I'll never stop fighting until it does. I'm Mandela Barnes, and I approve this message. Thousands stranded on 9-11, a small town in Newfoundland that opened their homes. The Broadway musical, Come From Away. The Internet of Things is evolving, creating the Internet of You. And Spectrum, America's leading Internet and mobile provider, is bringing you seamless connectivity across all your devices. Introducing Spectrum One. Spectrum Internet with speeds of 300 megabits, advanced Wi-Fi, and Spectrum Mobile Unlimited, all for just $49.99 a month. Call 833-673-4999. Spectrum Internet delivers speeds up to a gig with over 99.9% .9 network reliability. Advanced Wi-Fi provides enhanced security and privacy. That
it automatically blocks threats to protect all of your devices. And Spectrum Mobile gives you unlimited talk, text, and data with nationwide 5G and the most reliable service coast to coast. Switch now. Call 833-673-4999. At Spectrum, it's not just about connecting things. It's about connecting you. Get it all with Spectrum One, Spectrum Internet, Advanced Wi-Fi, and one line of Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for $49.99 a month. Call 833-673-4999 or visit a Spectrum store today. Don't miss the 33rd Annual Winter Art Fair Off the Square, November 12th and 13th at the Monona Terrace Convention Center. Featuring over 100 Wisconsin exhibitors with a wonderful selection of ceramics, paintings, glass art, wood, jewelry, and much more. Place your bids at our silent auction Saturday only. Children will enjoy the Young Collector's Corner. Buy local for the holidays. The Winter Art Fair Off the Square. Put it on your calendar today. This morning, asking for help with the Waukesha community trying to move forward after the trial, how you can make sure the victims are remembered. New help for the baby formula shortage, thanks to a Wisconsin plant. And don't let the temperatures fool you. It is November, although it won't feel that way. More September-like temperatures expect in a few days. I'll break down how warm we'll get and if any records are in jeopardy. Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to News 3 Now this morning. I'm Leah Linshine. I'm Chris Stanford. We have Greg Barnhart in this morning for Chris Reese with your first Warren Certified Most Accurate Forecast. Man, uh, nothing to complain about this morning. What's going on out Unless there? Unless you like the cold temps, then you could complain. But no, um, it's still warm. Like I said, we got a system coming, so the winds have picked up. And overall, the temperatures have increased compared to yesterday. In some areas, we're looking at maybe a 20-degree jump from yesterday when we had lighter winds and actually allowed the temperatures to get down into the 20s up to the north. So we're going to see that really trend continue. Today we're going to see highs once again around 70. Yes, this was yesterday, excuse me, 70. We actually hit 77 in Lone Rock, so almost getting up into the upper 70s for some locations. We're not going to see much of a difference today. Still about 70 in Madison, mid to upper 70s in similar locations. Winds will pick up today, cloud cover a little bit more, but overall still good. We're looking at 40 degrees right now in Madison. We'll climb up to about 63 by noon with plenty of sun sunshine and light winds. Look at really the satellite picture right now for the Midwest. Warm temperatures, silly winds, and not much cloud cover to speak of. But that does change as you get further west, and that's a system with all those pinks down there and purples. That's the winter storm stuff coming. We will see that eventually get here. I'll break down when we'll expect the rain and how cool we'll get this weekend a bit later in the broadcast. Okay, Greg Barnhart, thank you very much. To campaign 2022 now, the latest and final Marquette Law School poll comes out today. It'll be the last chance to see where the candidates stand ahead of Tuesday. Our Shane Hogan is here with what we expect to see in this Last and latest poll. Good morning there, Shane. Hey, good morning, Chris. Yeah, that last poll comes out. Uh, the last poll came out last month on October 12th, and that one showed very tight races here in Wisconsin. Two weeks ago, Senator Ron Johnson up over challenger Democrat Mandela Barnes 52 to 46 percent, which is more than the four point margin of error. Barnes was hot out of the gates, though, earlier in the summer with a big lead over the incumbent Ron Johnson. And in the race for governor, among likely voters, incumbent Governor Tony Evers leading challenger Tim Michaels 47 to 46 percent, which is a small tightening lead from the September poll. Now, they have been neck and neck for months now, and the new poll coming out later today at 1215. Again, the last one before Tuesday's election. Poll director Charles Franklin will be live on News 3 Now's Live at 4 to break down the results with Mark and Susan later this afternoon. But one thing to keep in mind here, polling experts believe many voters are already locked in on who they're going to vote for. So between now and Tuesday, the polling shouldn't change too much. But again, today's new results will give us a real really good idea of where things stand as we are just six days away from the midterm election. Shane Hogan with that preview. We appreciate it, Shane. Thank you very much. News 3 Now and Channel 3000.com, your home for campaign 2022 news. All the resources you need to inform your vote and have your voice heard. Just keep it here with us leading up to November 8th. Leaders in Waukesha are asking the public for donations to help complete the Christmas parade memorial. They say they need one and a half million dollars to complete the three designs. If they stay on schedule, they'll be ready by next November. According to the commission, all donors to the memorial will be recognized. The January 6th committee is in discussions with former President Trump about him testifying under oath. The panel subpoenaed the former president last month, seeking a wide array of documents, plus a request to have him sit for an interview. He has until Friday to respond to the committee's subpoena for documents. He has until November 14th for testifying. Meanwhile, it looks like Senator 
Lindsey Graham will have to appear in front of an Atlanta grand jury investigating efforts to overturn the presidential election in Georgia. Graham had filed an emergency request asking the Supreme Court to halt testimony while legal challenges play out. The court declined that request. Graham's testimony now scheduled for November 17th. New this morning, a never before revealed 911 recording from the Uvalde school shooting in May. It reveals a 10 year old girl trapped in the attack calling police dispatchers. We do have a child on the line. That recording from right in the middle of the day as everything was unfolding in Ubaldi on May 24th. Fourth grader Chloe Torres, who survived the shooting, was inside room 112 at Robb Elementary and spoke to 911. It's the phone call that should have made the difference. Instead, it would be another 40 minutes until police entered the room and killed the gunman. That full recording is available on channel3000.com this morning. A Madison teenager is in court today for a status conference. Take a look at this video. You remember this crime? 18-year-old Avian Howard is facing charges of operating a vehicle without consent. This video from back in the spring, it allegedly captures Howard crashing a stolen car on the Beltline during rush hour. You can see five or six passengers here running from the scene, some of them jumping into the marsh to get away. Miraculously, none, but none of them were hit by oncoming traffic. Howard's status conference is scheduled for 845. 634 now. A nationwide shortage of baby formula has forced thousands of mothers to look for other options, which oftentimes means relying on milk banks. Now, Madison is helping more mothers by opening up a milk depot. It will probably be one of the busiest depots in Wisconsin. Um, there's a really high breastfeeding rate in Madison, which is awesome. It's the more easy we make it for our donors to donate, the more likely they are to participate and to donate more. And the more milk we have, the more families we can serve, the more babies we can feed. That's what it's all about, right? In partnership with the Mother's Bank of the Western Great Lakes, UW Health has opened up the depot on Odana Road. Donations will be brought back to Elk Grove Village, Illinois. Their milk bank will then test and pasteurize the milk from all the depots in the area then distribute it back to over 70 hospitals. Most of the supply goes towards NICU babies whose mothers aren't able to meet the milk demand right away. And some promising news here in baby formula news, manufacturer Perigo announcing that it's buying the rights to Nestle's Good Star brand. It may mean some relief for the shortage. The company will require, uh, acquire rather the Wisconsin plant in Eau Claire. The $170 million deal is expected to help the company better meet demand after shortages this year left many families scrambling to find infant formula. Rock County first responders are voting tonight on a plan to merge teams to better respond to emergencies. Ten different municipalities plan to unite into a fire protection district. The city of Milton has been talking about this since January, hoping to join the Edgerton Fire Department. Firefighters say the agreement would help with staffing and wages, with plans to raise the hourly pay to 15 bucks an hour. That vote is scheduled for 6 p.m. at the town of Fulton Hall. 6.36 as we take a look outside this morning. Traffic picking up here. Uh, just a few leaves left on the trees out there. We are not feeling like early November, folks. We have some uh, cooler temperatures and rain and thunderstorms in the forecast that Greg will break down for us in just a moment. And as we look ahead to Election Day, a look back at some of the first votes cast by women in the U.S. The ballot box they used from the Civil War. Plus, we're talking Flannel Fest in the 608. Coming up, we're talking to organizers about how you can give back. But as we go to commercial, I'm just going to stretch my fingers and we'll see what I come up with when we return. Black November starts now at Ashley. For a limited time, save 55% on Beautyrest Select Hybrid Mattresses and receive a comforter, two pillows, and a four-piece sheet set for free. And get 60 months special financing with no money down. Happening now, only at Ashley. Over 800 convicted criminals released. 270 murderers and attempted murderers released. 44 child rapists released. Tony Evers' parole commission has released hundreds of violent criminals early, including some of the worst killers in Wisconsin history. Evers' liberal policies are making our communities less safe. Tony Evers put criminals first and our family's safety last. Pre-shop the big fall sale at Madison Lighting. Save on every light fixture, every brand, indoors and out. Plus, save on all their home decor. 
You'll love this. Madison Lighting, Watts Road, Madison. Culligan Water delivers from your first call to your first sip to your first soak. Culligan, give us a tap. The only water that comes with a van. There will always be bumps in the road, but we got guts, America. We got freedom. We got power. We got future. So let's drive on and make the future we want to see together. Because your new Ford vehicle is just the start of a journey. So stop by your Ford dealer today and claim one of the thousands of new Ford trucks and SUVs on their way. We've been building this country for 119 years, but we're just getting started. Radical Tim Michaels is extremely divisive. I don't care who I offend. And at his company, the culture comes from the top. Multiple court filings say women were sexually assaulted, harassed, and pressured to have sex with their bosses. If she refused demands for sex, she would be blackballed from working on a pipeline job. Higher-ups dismissed the women as liars and fired those who spoke out. I don't care who I offend. That's how Tim Michaels runs his company. Don't let him run our state. Black November starts now at Ashley. For a limited time, take a bonus 20% off your purchase of $19.99 or more at checkout. Plus, get 60 months special financing, no minimum, and no money down. Happening now, only at Ashley. As political ads bombard you with campaign promises and claims to capture your vote, News 3 Now gives you a reality check, clarifying the candidates' messages and finding the facts to help you make informed choices. Reality Check, tonight on News 3 Now at 6. News 3 Now presented an exclusive debate between Wisconsin Attorney General Josh Call and challenger Eric Toney going head-to-head, -head, making their cases why they should get your vote. And only News 3 Now brought you the debate live. Your local election headquarters. You're watching News 3 Now this morning. In the 608, we have a fun way for you to help support the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund. Josh Ryder live in Madison to preview Flannel Fest. I didn't have any flannel that fits me anymore, Josh, so I wore plaid today. Does that count? Oh my gosh, we'll make that count. <laughs> but hey, we're wearing flannel like three times this week. So we're doing it today, we're doing it Friday, we're doing it Saturday. Hey, I tease it before the commercial break. I've got a little something. jingle I've been practicing. Here we go. Very nice. Wow, I'm impressed. I've been practicing for the last two hours. It took me all the way up to this point to have the energy to be able to bring it to you guys. We, of course, love our News 3 Now jingle, and we're here at Funk's Pub, which is going to be rocking this coming Saturday as we're talking all about Flannel Fest. I love this backdrop right here behind Beth Kelly this morning. Beth, you know, we're talking Flannel Fest, and this is all for a good cause, because not only can you come out and have a lot of fun, but we are helping support the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund. Yes. And this has really been able to raise a ton of money over the years. Yes, yeah, since 2014, we have raised $80,000 to help keep the heat on in the winter and the air conditioning on in the summer for people all around the state with Flannel Fest. So how does this event work? Obviously we're rocking the flannel. You got the flannel yes, and the flannel the earrings. earrings. Check out the earrings too. You got the whole piece <laughs> on today. Yes. Well, you can go to flannelfest.com and learn all about it. But the doors here will open Saturday at 5 p.m. The bands start at 6. We've got uh, regional and local acts um, at Six o'clock, we have Natural Satellite. We've got Bascom Hill after that. My band, Beth Killy Band, will be on. And then the Mascot Theory. And then Four on the Floor. So we are just going to have a great time. We always have tons of people come out in their flannel. You don't have to wear flannel, but it's highly recommended. And uh, we just have our flannel faithful show up every year. And they are having a great time for a good cause. We love it. And I mean, you're part of this, too. I mean, how cool is that for you to be able to be a part of this event, but also know that all of this is really going to a good cause? Too? Yeah. You know, really, um, so Eric Telland of the Mascot Theory and I, we started this back in 2014, and it was just kind of on a whim, and we thought, well, we should do something fun, get our bands out to play, and do something good for the community, and here we are, nine times later, still rocking flannel, and we've raised all this money for all the people in our state, and it's just been really wonderful to see how it's grown, and all these people that come out to support their friends and neighbors. A great, great uh, effort here. Let's throw the information up on the screen right now. So what do people know, need to know if they're interested in coming out on Saturday? Yeah, go to flannelfest.com or uh, if there's tickets left, you can get, get them at the door. Uh, doors open here at Funk's Pub.
Pub at 5 p.m. and uh, wear your flannel. Wear your best flannel. I love <laughs> it. It's like that time of year you have to kind of pick and choose, like, which one am I going to wear today? Exactly, exactly. Awesome. Well, thank you. Good luck with everything Saturday. Appreciate yes, your time here this morning. You would come out and play your jingle for Oh, my us. gosh. That's the only thing I can play. That's <laughs> one thing I can play in the piano. So we, we at least got that. We'll incorporate it in somehow, <laughs> somehow. I love it, Beth. Thank you so much. We'll have all this up on channel3000.com as well. Of course, News Street Now is a proud sponsor of this event. So come ma uh, make a big difference here in the 608. It's that time of the year. We want to help our neighbors out in any way we can. You can't see photojournalist Mark Schilling. He's got his flannel on this morning. We're also wearing the same pants, guys. We both <laughs> walked in with the same exact khakis on. Oh, so brother. you can tell we've been working together for a long time because we're already starting to dress like each other. And I think I'm a little crazier than Mark sometimes. But yeah, he's shaking his head yes. <laughs> guys, Josh we'll send it back to you. And Mark Schilling, just well-dressed, talented men there, huh? So Two you can't go wrong. Pod. You can't go wrong with the flannel no, and the you khakis. Can't. You're right. Thanks, Josh. Classy. Uh, an important initiative uh, that we should uh, all try to support. Now, don't forget, folks, Josh is always looking for ideas for In the 608 in his segment. You can reach out on social media or email him for a chance to be featured. Quarter to seven, Greg Barnhart is in with your first warm weather this morning, helping to plan your day. Hey, Greg. Hey, and uh, definitely not flannel weather here for the next couple days, at least during the daytime. Here's what we're expecting for highs today is around 70s to mid 70s. Once again, that's about 15 to 20 degrees, what we should be this time of year. We're going to have probably one more day of this, and then we'll cool off. But give you an idea, the last average temperature of 70 should be October 20th. Back in 2020, we had a nice stretch in early November where we had five days above 72. So it's not unheard of, really. Once you get down to the end of November, we're looking at 60s as being real rare. Overall, southwest flow is continuing aloft. We have a system out to the west that's bringing the mountain snow and valley rain. That's a system that's going to eventually bring us our rainfall here by uh, Thursday night and Friday. But you can see that will push east. The one thing it do lack is the real cold air. That's still going to be up to the north. We're going to cool down as we go through Saturday and then it's Sunday, but we're still looking like upper 50s, 60s instead of maybe 40s. It's not till really next week after Election Day that we start seeing that cold air start to really push into the Midwest. By then, we're only looking at upper 40s, which is about average what we should be. Today and tomorrow, just cloud cover, south winds, winds will start increasing, especially tomorrow we'll see the winds increase as that system gets closer. A few showers do start coming in. That's going to be more for a Thursday night and a Friday morning, and then Friday this line just kind of sits there, and we just get showers continuously through Friday night into Saturday. Morning. So overall today, temperatures once again climbing to low to mid 70s in most locations. Not going to see any issues today, even going through this evening. The winds will pick up, but still under 15 miles per hour. Tomorrow, tonight will be much warmer, low 50s. Winds will still be up there a little bit, and then tomorrow definitely the winds. 15, 25, we'll definitely see it. There's your cloud cover, and there's your shower starting to come in towards the end. That you'll see there. Precipitation-wise, through Saturday, you can see how it really peaks up about Saturday morning, and then it goes through, and then we see it begin to lift up. So uh, Sunday doesn't look too bad overall for temperatures. You're looking at maybe in the 60, which is still above average, but we do cool off there afterwards. So. Once you get towards the end of next week, mid 40s, then we get below average by the low 40s. But still, this is now the second week of November. Not too bad, even that forecast. To speak of. I will take it. 60s, even when it's raining, huh? It's going to yeah, be kind of Yeah, it's going to be. And notice rain. those overnight lows. Those actually might be records because we're going to not barely get below 60, which uh, could set a record for being the highest low temperature at night, too. So, yeah, it's it going to be a warm rain, not that upper 30s degree weather and you're raining outside. Dare I risk another camping weekend? Uh, don't do it, Leah. Do it. With the thunderstorms. Do I don't know. I don't know. Greg Barnhart, thank you very much for that <laughs> no first warm weather. Hey, the results from the 2022 election will be rolling in in a week, but it's important to know your history on our right to vote. Just 100 years ago, the 19th Amendment gave women that right. Take a look at the historic ballot box that accepted some of the first votes made by women in the country. It was a Civil War medical box that eventually got a hole cut in it to make it into a ballot box. Those first ballots cast right here in the Midwest to the, our neighbors to the West in Minnesota. South St. Paul has the connection of having the first women in the country to vote after the passage of the 19th Amendment. About 90 women um, woke up early, got in line to register to vote here in South St. Paul, and they were the ones to, to cast their ballot. Those first ballots cast back in 1920. A look back at history as we look ahead to this next election day. What a cool story. Mm -hmm. 648 now coming up in the morning sprint. Sentencing in a major school shooting case scheduled to happen today. What sentence isn't on the table for the shooter? Yeah, if you've got a little kiddo turning three soon, let us know so we can show their picture on TV. We'll be right back. 
This portion of News 3 Now is sponsored by Three Bears Resort, Warren's, Wisconsin. With pick and save delivery, it's easy to get your special holiday foods brought right to your door. And that's music to your ears. Pick and save, fresh for everyone. A 12-year-old girl can't legally drive a car. At 12, she can't even vote. But if this little girl were tragically raped or a victim of incest and became pregnant, Radical Tim Michaels would force her to deliver the baby. He said it's, quote, not unreasonable for the state government to mandate rape victims to give birth. Would it be unreasonable if he were forcing this on you? Let him know on election day. The garage door is America's new front door. So why not look at it in a whole new way? Let Precision's experienced designers come to you. Let us show you the difference a new Precision garage door can make. Precision Door Service, a name you can trust. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Liberty Mutual. They customize your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. Contestants ready? Go! Oh, no, 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 no. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. It was Halloween. My daughter stopped at three homes. Her girlfriend's house, her teacher's house, and the man that murdered her. He molested her. And he put her in a garbage bag. He was going to be released in 2018. Josh Call, he was not there for me at all. You want some help to find out what's going on, and he doesn't help. You don't care about the victims. I know Eric Tony does. Eric Tony helped keep that man that murdered my daughter from being released. Eric Tony's always been there for me, and that's the kind of attorney general we need. Wells Fargo lets you know where you stand with your FICO credit score. What if you knew where you stood with everything? Like your future in-laws. Hope you like cats. Uh, I hope your parents like me. Ah, they're whispering. The kid is like <laughs> Can they tell I'm allergic? Tears of joy. Welcome to the family. Phew. Like knowing where you stand? When it comes to your credit score, you can with Wells Fargo news in Dallas, Texas, where at least five police officers were killed when they were ambushed. This was the deadliest day for U.S. law enforcement since 9-11. Just days after this horrific crime, Mandela Barnes appeared on Vladimir Putin's propaganda news outlet and rationalized violence against American police officers. Police officers are over-exercising their badness. This probably was a retaliatory attack. Do you want Mandela Barnes representing you in the Senate? I'm Ron Johnson, and I approve this message. Keep your holidays in sync with free pickup on all your fresh favorites from Pick and Save. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. Gruber Law Offices. One call, that's all. 6.51, time for the morning sprint. The grand prize for tonight's Powerball drawing up to $1.2 billion this morning. It's the second largest Powerball jackpot ever. The popular cash option payout is nearly $600 million before taxes. The odds to win the Powerball, about 1 in 292 million. Today, the Parkland school shooter will be formally sentenced. Families of the 17 people killed spent yesterday speaking directly to the gunman. He pleaded guilty to 17 counts of murder and 17 counts of attempted murder. Last month, the jury recommended he be sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Many family members expressed disgust that he didn't get the death penalty. Breaking news, CV CBS says it's reached a proposed $5 billion deal that would make it the first pharmacy chain to settle opioid lawsuits across the U.S. The settlement is over how the company handled powerful and addictive prescription painkillers. CVS not admitting wrongdoing. It would make the payments over a decade. If you have any unwanted pumpkins or jack-o'-lanterns laying around, don't let them just rot. You can actually dispose of those with your leaves. Other plant-based Halloween decor, such as corn stalks and hay, can also be thrown away with yard waste. You can find what times to set out your waste using the city's website. You can also take it to a street division drop-off site. The hours and rules for each site are up on the city's website. Political heavyweights are barnstorming the country this morning. The election, less than a week away now. Former President Barack Obama is in Arizona today to support Democrats in the races for Senate and Governor. Former President Trump will be in Iowa later this week. CBS News considers five Senate races to be toss-ups, including Wisconsin's. Any of those races could be the deciding factor in who controls Congress. 
And while we wait for the results of the latest and final Marquette Law School poll to come out today, ahead of Election Day, a new Fox News poll has Senator Ron Johnson with a slight edge in that Senate race. The conservative news outlet has Democrat Mandela at Barnes down by three percentage points. It's a tighter margin than last month's Marquette poll that had Barnes down by six points. As far as the governor's race, Fox News has a 47-46% split in favor of Republican Tim Michaels. That's a flip from Marquette's last findings. That new poll comes out today just after noon. Plus or minus there of three percentage points. Uh, important to note, too. Margin of error. Margin of error, yes. There you go. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Badger safety, uh, John Torchio, a semifinalist for the Benderick Award, which is given to the best defensive player in college football each season. The senior has been uh, having a pretty spectacular season so far. Uh, very first game, he was the one who returned that interception for 100 yards. That was the longest in school history. He currently leads the team with five interceptions. To Badger women's hockey now, Caroline Harvey, the WCHA's Rookie of the Month for the second month in a row. She now has four conference recognitions this season. Harvey tallied 13 points during the month of October. She doesn't only lead the Badgers, but the whole conference rookie class. Congrats to her. CBS News confirming part of a Washington Post report that cameras outside of the home of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi captured the moment that a man broke in before attacking her husband. A Capitol Police officer in Washington, D.C. first noticed the break-in thousands of miles away on remote surveillance cameras. Only after the attack when a D.C. Capitol officer saw a San Francisco police cruiser in the driveway. The suspect, David DePap, is charged with attempted murder burglary, and elder abuse. The Packers' Aaron Jones is in Wausau this week visiting Patriot Canines of Wisconsin. Jones comes from a military family. Both his parents and his brother served. The running back is serving as the team's spokesperson for November's Salute to Service. Salute to Service bandanas are selling for 10 bucks in the Packers' Pro Shop. $5 from each sale will go to Patriot Canines. The union representing United Airlines pilots rejected a tentative agreement. 94% of members voted against the deal. 94%. United said that it expected the rejection. It is already working with the union on a new agreement with improved rates and other enhancements. Just a day ago, Delta pilots voted in favor of authorizing a potential future strike. Yeah, another day, another 70 degree day for a bus stop. This is more like you would expect for like early October, late September, but still it's going to be fantastic bus getting on and off. Three things to know, like I said, mild temperatures continue today and tomorrow. We'll have the rain come in Thursday night, better shot Friday night into Saturday morning. Could be some significant rainfall, beneficial too. But temperatures don't cool off that much, even still 60 degrees on Monday. So it's going to be actually pretty good. Planning your day, 70 degrees out there, looking good. Rain chances, like I said, come in at about Friday night. And then if you look at the... Uh, 10 day we cool off a little bit but overall we're not that bad even for the end of October. excuse me the beginning of November all right Greg Barnhart thanks for that first warm weather we appreciate it thank you for joining us this morning folks enjoy that gorgeous sunrise we're going to be back with another news and weather update coming up in about half an hour